Gun Control, Armas de Fuego, qué es lo que está pasando y qué hay que hacer. No administration has been able to control the illegal trafficking of guns. Él siempre la tiene que estar encima. Que ojo por ojo se van en la calle. Que no le dejen todas las responsabilidades a la policía, que la policía realmente no puede. We're in Puerto Rico, which has some of the strictest gun control laws in the nation. At the same time, it has the world's highest murder rate by firearm. And this paradox has made this island nation ground zero for the gun control debate. In 2011, Puerto Rico's homicide rate reached an all-time high. More than 1,100 murders in one year. The next year, the island nation topped the world's list for homicides by firearm beating out places like Sierra Leone, Guatemala, and Honduras. The surge in gun-related crime in Puerto Rico is aided by the flow of illegal weapons into the island. The police are trying to crack down on the trafficking of illegal guns and the resulting rise in crime. The violence in Puerto Rico has led to a small arms race between criminals, citizens, and police. We're embedded with the Bayamon SWAT team, and these guys are super active on the island. They've been called out 69 times this year to do uh, raids and entries. They did one two nights ago, got a bunch of guns and drugs. They hit another house last night with 10 people, got drugs. Um, so, they're a machine. What's happening right now is that we're in a convoy. This car that we're following right now, the detective's car, does a drive-by, marks the house and then these guys hit it. The Bayamon SWAT team seizures of illegal weapons reach into the thousands each year. And before they're destroyed, they're stored in a heavily guarded vault within a vault underneath police headquarters. What we found there was staggering. Hola. Oh, We're gonna take a little tour of what the Puerto Rican police department basement looks like. There's an entire wall of pistols. Nine millimeter Uzi, uh, preferred weapon of uh, Israeli special forces and gangbangers. Ton of assault rifles, a lot of shotguns, AKs, AR-15s. Tons of boxes of ammunition. <laughs> this is for like the Puerto Rican Dirty Harry right here. Who, who carries this thing? Uh, what this is right here, uh, they actually keep this separated from the rest of the firearms, um, but it's a little, what, what did you call it? A, 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 a chip, it's a chip, like a hack for your Glock. You basically hack your Glock and, oh right, they put it right here where normally there's like an internal hammer on this. It, it fits right in, and uh, it makes this thing full auto, which is a felony. You can see there's pretty much anything and everything from machine guns to 50 cals, high end, low end, it's a lot of guns. And the enormity of the problem falls largely on the shoulders of the new police chief, Jose Caldero. Does the ease and availability of guns in the United States have an impact on Puerto Rico? Esto es bien complejo en la facilidad de nosotros hemos recibido muchas cantidades de armas, especialmente por correos privados. Si buscamos las estadísticas, pues el problema mayor los tenemos con las armas ilegales. Yo te diría sobre el 85% 90% de las armas que estamos incautando pues son ilegales, completamente ilegales. Es difícil, pero nosotros Este, estamos ocupando sobre mil, dos mil almas a veces en el año, pues. Pero el problema es que ocupamos y siguen apareciendo más. 
The Puerto Rican police are even borrowing technology pioneered to catch enemy snipers in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan in order to keep watch over the streets. The technology, Shot Spotter, is an audio system that instantly geolocates when and where a shooting occurs. So basically it's, it's microphones set up um, that can then triangulate where a gunshot happened? Yes, it's uh, a bunch of sensors that are specifically located so they can triangulate and it let us know in a time of 12 seconds to 30 seconds that a gunshot incident is occurring and we receive an alert so we can move the, the patrollers or anything that we need, all the resources to get into the scene. So we can listen here to a full automatic weapon. So it's good in the way of response. And at the same time, with all the data that we can recover, you can establish if there are trends, if there are patterns. You can tell them, OK, there are gunshots happening this day at this hour. So if you want to make a good surveillance, you have the data to do it. Despite the police department's efforts, they've had limited success in preventing gun violence and cracking down on crime. And all types of illegal guns continue to infiltrate the streets at alarming rates. After weeks of working with sources in San Juan, we met with the leadership of one of Puerto Rico's street gangs. These guys run the show in the projects and control the illicit trade of drugs and guns on the island. We told them we wanted to see some firepower, so they hooked us up with what they said was their best sicario, an assassin who we followed into the jungle outside of Gondora, one of the worst slums on the island, to show us the tools of his trade. Our guy's not willing to talk on camera, um, but he's gonna show us the guns and what he's got. Oh, amigo. So, all right, what he's showing me is that they built a chip into the back right here. Uh, and this turns this handgun, which you can buy almost anywhere, into a fully automatic weapon. And you have a high capacity magazine too. Bueno. He's gonna demo for us right now. Watch this shit. Fuck. One of the things I learned on this trip is that it's super hard um, to actually shoot guns legally here. So in order to, to test their illegal shit, they got to come out here and practice. It looks like we have some, some high caliber rifles. This is that they brought out for us. Uh, this right here is an AR-15. This right here is an AK. This obviously is like one of the most famous weapons in the world. The, uh, the Kalashnikov, favorite of uh, insurgents and African dictatorships. And one of the things that he told me is that uh, they actually need these weapons to defend themselves against the police. He said the police here are super corrupt. And, uh, and so that's why they have these high-powered weapons. And then finally, this is a AK-47 frame. This uses this 30-round magazine to fire shotgun shells. You basically just locked and loaded and racked the AK. So you just blasted off the, just dumped a bunch of rounds from the AK into the clearing barrel. You can actually feel it smoking from the heat, from the rounds, you can smell it. <clears throat> and uh, no shit like, now we gotta get out of here. We're out. Being with one of Puerto Rico's top Sicarios gave us an understanding of how the professionals do the job. But most of the gun violence on the island comes from lower level street thugs. On the condition that we didn't reveal his identity, we met up with a dealer who's never without his 45 for protection. What do you do for a living? You sell drugs, like how do you make your money? And, and how much are guns on the street? Do you carry it all the time? Like, 
Y siempre la tienen que tener encima, porque si está, si está bien en la, en la calle vendiendo droga, siempre va, va a querer alguien quedarse con, con lo que uno ha podido lograr y quedarse con tu puesto. Uno tiene que protegerse del enemigo y de la ley también. When did you start carrying a gun? How old were you? A los 16, 15, por ahí. So 45? Sí. And have you ever had to use it? Sí. Aquí en Puerto Rico ya no tenía oportunidades. Yo por lo menos he hecho tiempo. Y vuelto a salir y es lo mismo. No hay nada a la vez que sales de la cárcel. A lo mismo. Dinero fácil. With about a thousand people shot per year and rampant street crime at an all-time high, Puerto Ricans are arming themselves for protection at unprecedented rates. So you show me the shop? Sure. Come in. Thank you. Welcome. This year alone, gun permit applications have doubled, possession of guns has tripled, and licenses for shooting ranges have quadrupled. Many of the shops are cashing in <laughs> and even expanding their customer base. Women are now the fastest growing demographic among applicants for handgun licenses and permits, which is in large part thanks to hairstylist Wanda Torres. 357. Clock 357. Sí, sí. And that's your own personal gun. Sí. It's a big gun. Sí. Torres made headlines in 2011 when an attacker shot her in the chest as she was closing up shop at her beauty parlor one night. She was packing heat and retaliated by shooting her attacker in the balls. Now she's become the face of armed women defending themselves, inspiring more and more women to grab a gun for protection. So Wanda, tell me your story. Me dispongo a cerrar el salón cuando cierro la primera puerta. Siento que un auto se detiene bruscamente. Yo lo que hago bajo del escalón, al bajar del escalón, él me pone el mal de fuego en el pecho y se me dio la palabra, me dispara. En ese momento yo sentí miedo, sentí temor por mi vida y a la misma vez sentí un coraje. Lo que hago es saco mi alma de fuego, llevo mi mano en el pecho y empiezo a dispararle. Por eso fue que le disparé en esta área. Al yo darle otra detonación le di dos más y él sale corriendo. Mi cuerpo siente que quiere desvanecerse y yo no lo dejaba. Yo decía, tú no te vas a desvanecer, tú no te vas a caer. Llamo a mi esposo y le digo, y vinieron a saltar, estoy herida. Ahí enganchamos el teléfono. Cuando yo siento que me sale un buche de sangre en la boca, me dio miedo, le digo, Dios, no dejes que en este momento yo muera. No dejes que yo muera por mano de este, de este criminal. El pulmón estaba colapsado. El pulmón me llevó tres costillas. Cuando llego al centro médico, el médico me chequea y me dice, Wanda, te me estás yendo. De momento, yo siento que llega una camilla y una persona que está gritando, muchacho, grita y grita y grita. Yo digo, doctor, ven acá. Y me dice, ¿qué pasó? Yo le digo, a mí esto fue en Cagua. Este, la persona que yo le disparé fue en esta área. Dime que ese que está ahí gritando no es él, porque yo siento que él. Cuando va y verifica el frente, era él. Y ahí él fue preso por 15 años. Me paré de frente y le dije a las mujeres, tenemos el derecho constitucional de tener licencia y portar armas de fuego en forma legal. Álmese, defiéndase en su vida. Porque también tenemos el derecho a tener vida. Que no le dejen todas las responsabilidades a la policía, que la policía realmente no puede. Si yo no tengo a mi pistola en mi cintura y mi licencia, hoy yo no estuviese aquí. But getting a gun in Puerto Rico is not simple. The gun laws here require more permits and longer waiting periods than anywhere else in the United States. And it's more expensive. It's almost easier to buy an illegal weapon than a legal one. And so what are the stages? First, you have to get a license. First, you have to get a license, but with that license, you have to do three affidavits. You have to pay $125. You have to be a member of a gun club. You have to do uh, fingerprints and all the stuff. And then the police department in four months give you the license, and then when you take the license, you have to take a course in 45 days, before 45 days. And then that's only for weapon permit or shooting license. Then when you have that license, if you want to get a concealed carry license, you have to go to the court and you have to pay $800 or $1,000 more. And it's a, it's a process that takes you time and money. 
So in total, it sounds like to be able to carry a gun or come to a range and shoot, you're talking several thousand dollars? Without the weapon, without the gun. In response to this collision between crime and strict gun permitting and legislation, the NRA has sensed an opportunity. It started bringing its vast influence to try and reform Puerto Rico's gun laws. We've come to a small city called Fajardo, and today the NRA is holding its monthly gun shoot, and it's a way for them to promote NRA policies and guns on the island. Hola. Hey, <laughs> Rafael Torres is the state association president of the NRA's new chapter in Puerto Rico. He took us on a tour of the day's shooting tournament to tell us why he and the NRA believe that arming more Puerto Ricans could cut down on violence in the island. I have been handling guns all my life. I, I have a, 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 a concealed carry permit for about 48 years now. But I noticed that Puerto Rico was not included in NRA's list, there were the 50 states, but we, being a commonwealth, we were not included in that list. So I said, well, you have to include us. And we are the 51st state association for the NRA in the USA. This is the range? Yeah, the one to the left is the skid range, but this one is for short or pistol range. Do you think that if you can increase gun rights here, it will decrease gun crime? Oh, yes. Yes, and it has been proved in every place around the globe. If you have gun power in the responsible society, crime dwindles. That's a fact. And if you are loaded, criminals will say, no, no that fellow is loaded. Well, we may have problems. So they go and find an old lady without a gun. Ready? Fire! Look at that. Look at that. That's, he's the owner to this cannon. monster. Did you, did you use the laser or no? No. No. Open sights, iron sights. Yeah. Why do you think it's important to have an NRA chapter here? Well, first of all, because we have the toughest law in the nation. So we have to try to get rid of this law. By this law, you mean? Uh, the, the, the guns law in Puerto Rico. These people behind me, they are the kids. That's our future. And, and we are focused into showing them how it works. We need the kids. We need the women, and we need everybody that doesn't believe in guns to come over and see for themselves. We have to defend our rights completely, every day. But the NRA's arguments in Puerto Rico echo the same arguments the organization makes in the United States. Gun control advocates like Democratic politician Jorge Suarez believe that the NRA is using the debate over gun control in Puerto Rico as a Trojan horse to reform gun laws in the USA. If they pass something here, they knew they can pass it up in the States because we are more restrictive than anywhere else in the, in the continental states. The thing is that we need to be careful. They're looking at Puerto Rico as a model to be implemented in other places, so we have to be careful of what we are doing. While Puerto Ricans are dealing with the reality of people getting murdered, the NRA is looking at Puerto Rico as the perfect natural experiment. If loosening gun laws here, the worst place on no. earth for gun homicide, can be linked to a decrease in crime, that argument could have implications for the national gun rights debate in the United States. But that's just a theory, one the NRA has been promoting for years. Most Puerto Ricans are less concerned with politics in the states than the violence in the streets. The island is awash in gangs, guns, and drugs, and it's not clear whether cracking down or arming up will solve the problem.